this newest addition in the franchise does not disappoint, with new things to experience on every level. I had so much fun playing this game, and Retro Studios has done the series proud. In the process of reaching- Seven years ago, I started a silly little tradition on this channel called Donkey Kong Month. I just wanted to talk about my favorite game series, but it quickly blossomed into one of the highlights of my year, where I could chat with other creators who love DK just as much as I do, and even race some games for charity. I couldn't be happier that it inspired other people to make Donkey Kong videos and celebrate with me. And I've covered pretty much everything I could think of about the franchise at this point. Which leads me to this year, the final Donkey Kong month. All good things must come to an end, and unless a new game is announced in the future, I've said about all I want to when it comes to DKC. But such a foundational part of my channel deserved a special going away party. So we're gonna celebrate all month long, and I figured the most poetic way to start things off would be to remake my very first DK month video, the top 5 best and worst bosses of the series. Not only is that video horrible, please don't go watch it, I beg of you, but also I realized that I don't necessarily agree with my picks anymore, so it was due for an update. But that's long enough of an intro, eh? Let's dive into the best bosses first. Now look, the DKC series isn't really known for having mind-blowing bosses or anything, but there are some that I found particularly memorable. Number 5 has to go to Cleaver, because this was the first one that really showed us what the series could be capable of. A lava monster with a giant sword throwing fireballs at you is scary enough, but when you hit it three times and realize the sword itself is the actual boss when it breaks free and chases you around the arena, leaves such a strong impression. This is a great boss to show off the verticality of levels added in the sequel, and gives a great opportunity to experiment with Dixie's hair twirl to survive its onslaught. Without the ability to simply jump on Cleaver's head, having to wait for a lone cannonball and dodge his attacks gave my six-year-old heart a sense of dread I had not yet experienced. Belcha, while being a relatively simple fight, gets extreme bonus points simply for its unique concept. This is the only boss I'm aware of that doesn't fall after a certain number of hits. In fact, you technically don't even damage it at all, but instead have to throw beetles into its mouth so it can burp and launch itself backward to its death. But he'll also move forward over time too, so if you're not quick enough he can push you toward a similar fate. It basically turns into a tug of war where efficiency is the key to success, and the stress of timing your throws to avoid his wooden teeth makes for a great combination of skills required to take him down. Plus, he's named Belcha. I mean, come on. I've given Donkey Kong 64 a lot of crap in the past, but I will say the bosses are some of its best features. I had many good picks to choose from here, but for number 3 I have to go with the second Dogodon battle in Fungi Forest. While part of this fight is very similar to his first encounter, the changes this time around more than make up for it. This guy is really tough. About midway through, he'll jump on the platform, causing it to slowly start sinking into the lava. And the length of time you have to finish him off is a lot tighter than I expected. You don't have a lot of breathing room here. Plus, he'll shoot this wall of fire at you, and the only way to avoid it is to hang off the edge of the platform. You don't see stuff like that too often. And of course, my favorite part is getting huge and beating the crap out of him. Aw yeah, Chunky's my boy. DKC Returns and Tropical Freeze's bosses are mostly fine. Some of them go on too long, some can be frustrating, but Bashmaster the Unbreakable is one of my favorites from any game out there. This dude's giant hammer is crazy intimidating, and he doesn't mess around either. You gotta jump on the ice blocks he'll launch at you, dodge his slam attacks, and find the watermelon bombs to quickly damage him between phases. As he turns more and more into the Kool-Aid Man, his offensive moves get even harder. Like this one where he psychs you out, like come on man, that's not fair! But above all, I love this guy because the entire fifth world tells the story of how his henchmen gather fruit, freeze them, and turn them into popsicles just for him to enjoy. What a gangster. In my original video, I gave the number one spot to the King K. Rule fight in DKC1 because of the amazing music and fake out credits roll. But looking back, the battle itself is pretty basic and not very enjoyable on a replay. 
The second game showdown against Captain K. Rule, however, is the best boss fight in the entire franchise. It's long and epic, his massive blunderbuss has endless supplies of cannonballs apparently, and he'll even start throwing goo at you to slow you down or reverse your controls. It's the perfect amount of challenge, utilizes both Diddy's speed and Dixie's floating ability seamlessly, and if you count the extra fight in the Lost World, caps off the game in such style that I couldn't possibly give the top spot to any other boss. This is everyone's favorite Crazy King at his absolute best. Alright, that's enough positivity, let's talk about the worst bosses the series has to offer, starting with number 5. Look, I love Tropical Freeze as much as the next guy, it's a phenomenal title. But can we finally admit that Lord Frederick is a terrible boss fight? Like, it's not completely awful, there's some cool spectacle going on, but it definitely is annoying. The way he tiptoes around in the background and taunts you as he dodges your throws is beyond aggravating, especially since it gets harder as the fight goes on. And can we talk about how unbelievably small his hitbox is to actually damage him? When he charges back and forth, you have to hit right at the top of his back. Otherwise, you'll miss or take damage from his helmet. Landing the last few hits is torturous, because if you miss, you have to go through the entire last phase again before you can have another attempt. For a final boss, I felt like this was a pretty pitiful last hurrah in an otherwise incredible experience. DKC3's bosses are pretty hit and miss. You'll go from good fights like Eric or Chaos, and then fight something like Squirt, a giant slug face that's only attack is to push you around with a splash of water. I get why they included it, it made for a creative use of Ellie's trunk, but the simplicity of the fight combined with the absolute BS hitboxes of the ledges make for a doubly frustrating encounter because it feels like it should be one of the easiest in the game. And if you miss hitting those eyeballs, get ready to run around again and again. <sighs> It's hard to pinpoint why I dislike Colonel Pluck so much. Maybe it's the fact that you have to memorize his patterns to stand a chance at surviving. Maybe it's how slowly he moves so you're just stuck waiting around. Or maybe it's his stupid beak. Yeah, that's probably it. But either way, this is a Retro Studios fight that felt subpar at best. I'll give it originality points. For some reason, it reminds me of that evil penguin from Wallace and Gromit. But in a world full of flashy and extra mobile bosses, this chicken felt painfully slow and tedious. Bye bye. Captain K. Rule elevated the original final boss in pretty much every single way. So you'd think the next one after that would yet again improve things even further, right? Uh, no. Baron K. Rulenstein, even the names are becoming a stretch at this point, is creative, sure, a mad scientist fits perfectly with K. Rule's personality, but the fight itself is garbage, man. You have to take barrels and throw them at this tiny backpack with a janky hitbox, and dodging the lightning, jumping to the right platforms, and avoiding where K. Rule will move next takes reaction time that feels unhuman the first time you see it. And the hidden extra fight after 100%ing the game is supposed to be a nice reward. But this one is somehow even more ridiculous, where you have to time your throws into the air vent and hit him in the background, and set down iron barrels to stop lightning from hitting you. Like, it just tries to do too much at once and feels like a mess. So what could possibly be worse than that? Well, there's one more entry left on this list. My number one worst boss in all of the Donkey Kong franchise is... The entirety of DKC1. Yeah, like, all of them. I mean, except K. Rool, I guess. All the other bosses are just bigger versions of regular enemies and complete pushovers. I know Very Naughty is the first boss you fight in the entire series, so it's not like he should be insanely hard or anything, but at the same time, I've already beaten him before finishing this sentence, so... Back in 2014, I gave this spot to Dumb Drum specifically, and I still stand by that, he sucks. You don't even fight him directly, you just kill waves of enemies and then he gives up or something. But really, the entire game is so underwhelming that it makes the rest of the games look like Devil May Cry in comparison. Should I give the developers a little grace because it's the first entry in a new series? Totally. Would I rather still say the entire game sucks because it's a good meme? Absolutely.
So there you have it. What are some of your favorite or least favorite bosses from the DKC series? It actually was pretty hard to narrow down my choices to five each. There's a lot of good and bad out there. Let me know in the comments below and let's talk about it. Thanks for kicking off the final Donkey Kong month with me. There's plenty more to come, so stay tuned for more banana slam and goodness. I'll see you next time. Stay frosty, my friends. Thank you.